What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have what if Issei was neglected and became overpowered, part 1. After feeling desolate, after being betrayed by his clubmates for ignoring Rias Grimmery's feelings, Issei Hyoto has a life changing conversation that will lead him down the path of domination as the true Red Dragon Emperor. This is Overpowered Issei. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Let's try to hit a thousand likes if you're in this premiere right currently now. Let's try to hit a thousand likes for part two. Please, please, and thank you. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload, so that's my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button to become a balance breaker or a limit breaker. Thank you so much for the support. Remember to go subscribe to my two other channels, and Popowski and Fallen DxD, in the description below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and thank my balance breakers. Rob the King, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Seth Voiles, Aunt Lewis, The Beast YT3, Colex, Joe Baldwin, Russell Ketchow Jr., Madara Uchiha, Refeek135, Keep Saying 21, Blue Lightning, Sinor Q, X Data Patty Gaming, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sanitate, Steven Cruz, Z Key 2000, The J Boys, The PS Gamer, X or X 108, Mr. Wolf, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Dr. MLG is the Bomb, Asimotis, Grim Fireshot Gamer, That Round Guy, Zero Fusion, Source Bonder, Nick Me 98, God Said Why, and Chaotic Raven. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest membership tier. Now, at any further intrusion, let's go ahead ahead and start part one the prologue a hero's choice after school after the meeting ended azazel and ross visa left because they still have things to do as teachers the orc prepared for school festival with the remaining members looks like me and kiba have to do power related tasks i then glanced at byocho she's looking at the documents used at the meeting and is reading it she still hasn't returned to her good mood hmm what should i do said Issei. if i don't reconcile with her before the game i'm scared that it might cause difficulties apologizing it seems that she won't forgive me unless i acknowledge the cause and apologize to her and i don't know what the cause of it is hmm it has happened when i was having my head all puzzled over it a light runs through the top of the table. The light drew a circle and turned into the shape of a magic circle. It's a familiar symbol. Phoenix? Konoko-chan mutters. That's right. It's like Konoko-chan said. This is the right magic circle of the phoenix. It's a small circle which has the size to appear on top of a table, so it's a communication type. But who? Don't tell me it's Riser. What does he want? I was in suspicions. But from the magic circle, a holographic image was projected and the face of a young woman appears. She has a high class atmosphere and she looks... She has her hair up and adorned with an expensive looking accessories. Okasama, Ravel made a shocking voice. Okasama? Ravel's mother? So that means that she is the wife of the current head of the house, of Phoenix, which also makes her the mother of Riser. She's really pretty and she looks like in her 20s. Since she is a devil, I don't know her real age, but she certainly looks like Ravel. How do you do, Ravel? Sorry for the call suddenly. I couldn't get any time, so I ended up calling at this hour in the humans world Japan. It's still school time, right? Yes, it certainly is, but why did you call all of a sudden? When Ra Ravel asks, Lady Phoenix says, Are Rhea's son and Issei here? The one who was called by her is Byocho, and me? Why me? Issei thought in his head. Byocho stands in front of the projection. How do you do, Obasama? It's been a while. Ah, oh, Ria-san, how do you do? It certainly has been a while, and... The lady looks around. Is she looking for me? I position myself where you can see scene immediately. Ah, uh, hello. I'm Issei Hyoto. Hello to you, too. This is our first time meeting like this. Isn't it Issei Hyoto of the Sekiyuti? I apologize for introducing myself like this. No, no. So, do you have some business with me? I ask while asking politely. Yes, I thought I should greet you properly. Normally, I should go and greet myself to Ria-san who is in charge of the Hyoto residence and in the academy which my daughter will be home staying at, but there are reasons why we couldn't visit. You know, since the demands of the Phoenix Tears are increasing, so maybe they don't have time because of it. Keep a whispers to my ears. Ah, I see. How so the Phoenix are main suppliers for the Phoenix Tears, after all? I heard that there are emergency demands on the Phoenix Tears. In that, they can't keep up with the supplies, so the lady must be well within as well. That must be hard. 
It's much appreciated, seriously, Bitsho replies, while smiling. Not at all, Obisama. Your words would be enough. Please leave Ravel to us. I'm truly sorry, Ria-san, for having you take care of Riser after the game, and also having you look after Ravel. It seems like she isn't saying it with bad intentions. I never thought they would hold a grudge against us because of the engagement was cancelled, but it seems they don't even have a bit of it. There are so many big-hearted people in the House of Phoenix. But for Byocho, it must be complicated. After all, she couldn't decline the transfer of Ravel and look after her. Then the lady looks at me. Also, Issei, please look after my daughter. Me too. And she emphasized the word especially. Of course I would look after her. Y yes, of course, but Byocho is also there. And there are people who can look after her better than our club. Yes, of course. By entrusting my daughter Ravel to Ria-san and everyone else, then she would have no trouble at the school in the underworld. But what I would like to ask of you is different from that. Will you please protect her so no weird pests would come near her? By having the Red Dragon Emperor who has gained many achievements next to her, then both my husband and I can feel reassured. Weird pest? He was wondering in his head. So she's telling me to look after her so no guys would come near her in the human world? I'm also a guy, you know. Well, I won't do anything like lay my hands on Ravel. She's an important junior. She's cute, but I won't lay my hands on her, Issei said. I understand. I don't know how much I can do, but I will protect your daughter. When I said that, the lady made a bright expression, and besides me, Ravel has her face very red. Hey, hey, what happened, Ravel? Pff, for the moment, the red face of Rius, who appeared within my sight, looked sad. But that was just my eyes. I thank you very much, Ravel. Yes, Okasama. You know what you must do. You have to support Ria-san, and you have to listen to your seniors, and on top of that, you have to deepen your relationship with Issei Hyoto, as the daughter from the House of Phoenix worked very hard to do so, and don't tarnish the name of our house, okay? Of course, mother, Ravel replied. Looks like the mother and daughter are talking about something. I don't know why, but Ravel has her face red, and it looks like she is filled with spirits. And lastly, Issei Hyoto, the lady talks to me again. Yes? I hear that your dream is to become a high-class devil. Yes, is it? It is, and? My daughter is currently my bush-up. I traded with Riser. Uh, I have heard, Issei replied. Please remember it very well. My daughter is free. She is my bush-up. She doesn't belong to Riser very well. Yes, understood, ma'am. That's something I already know, but well, I just nod my head in case. Hearing that, the lady nods her head. She looks satisfied. Why? My business here is done. Ria-san, Issei Hyoto, and everyone, please forgive my sudden introduction. And it's now time. Ravel, behave in manner where you won't become a shameless lady. Yes, Okasama. Now then, everyone, goodbye. Flash. The light brightens, it turns into a shallow light, and then disappears. The greetings of Lady Phoenix, which came in like a storm, and us be due to worrying about her daughter, about the greetings to us. Those were things I'm not sure of, though. I was in doubt, and made a sigh, and Byocho, who was about to leave the room unsteadily on her foot, appears within my sight. But, but, sh but, Rius, where are you going? When I asked, Rius stops, and she mutters without turning around. Issei, will you protect me? Why do you ask such a thing? I don't know, but my answer is obvious. Of course I will protect you, Rius. And Azia? Yeah, of course I will protect Razia. And Akino? Uh, that is obvious, but what happens suddenly asking me such a thing? I don't get it. I don't get what President's intentions are at all. But President asked with a lower tone, Hey, Issei. Yes, to you, what am I? Who am I? I don't get the meaning of this question, but to me, um... President is President, and the moment I said that... Idiot, Rhea says. She scolds me mixed with the sound of her crying. President rushes away from her spot and she left the club room. Rhea Sonisama! Azia goes after the president. Azia turns around and reaches the door. Her eyes are soaked with tears. Why is Azia crying? Issei-san, you're horrible. It's too much. Why can't you... Why can't you just understand Onisama's feelings? Saying that, Azia goes after the president. Having Azia also say that to me, I just stood there dumbfounded. Well, wait a sec, what's the meaning of this? Why is Azia also mad at me? That wasn't right, Issei. Kiba makes a sigh. Not right, as in what? That's precisely... Jeez, you are so... I can understand very well what the girls are going through. Exactly, it's natural for Rius and Azia to get mad. Akino also sounded mad. Even Akino-san? Even I, who is as dense as these sort of things, thought you were a bit off, Issei. Even Zenobia looks at me with her eyes half-closed. 
Ah, Issei. Sure as a no-no, poor Rhea-san, even Irina was mad. You are the worst. Ooh, I just received the call as you are the worst from the Konoko-chan. I don't know what I did wrong. I just don't know. To begin with, maybe I should go after her? I tried to leave, but when I was stopped by Akano-san, the current Issei will just hurt her even more if you go after her, so don't. Seriously? Is... is that serious? But it's my fault, right? My fault? I really don't know. No, I actually have a maybe kind of guess, but inside me that possibility is very unlikely. It's basically impossible. That's why I don't understand. Shit, I started to get confused even more thinking about it. Hey, Gasper, am I really the bad guy here? I asked my junior. Guy says in an apologetic manner while twitching his body. Um, yes, I think you are very bad. Even Gasper said that to me. I felt down. Then Ravel asked while panicking, Um, this is my mother's fault, right? I'm sorry. Is it Ravel's fault? It seemed like President tried to leave after the communication between Phoenix's mother and a child. Akino's son places her hand on Ravel's shoulders. Ravel Chan, don't worry about it. Issei comes the most at fault here because he never tried to think about the crucial thing between Rias and himself until now. Akino cheers her up like that, and she started to prepare for tea to urging Ravel to sit on the sofa. It looks like I'm the biggest villain here. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Scene change. After the betraying he received from his club mates about his behavior, we found our protagonist aimlessly walking through the streets of Ko. He couldn't stand the stir-frying atmosphere in the club room any longer. Along with the disapproving looks from his friends, he needed some fresh air. He needed to be alone. No matter how hard he tried, though, he couldn't get the words his friends said to him out of his mind. He felt hurt. He felt betrayed. And most importantly, he felt alone. Why couldn't they understand? He had his own demons to deal with. As the thought of his flash black passed through his mind, black wings, cruel sneer on her face, mocking tone of voice. Will you die for me? Issei stumbles as he walked. I don't want a filthy low-class devil like you talking to me. He grabs his face. Ha! <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was a very royal date. Thanks to it, I was very bored. Issei suddenly started to hyperventilate. I don't want a rotten brat like you calling my name. He grabbed his chest in a vain attempt to evaluate his mental anguish. Isekun, please save me. This devil is trying to kill me. I love you. I love you so much. That's why. Let's defeat this devil together. Isei felt all the negative emotions he's repressed over the last few months boil to the surface. He can feel the facade he puts on to hide his deeply scarred heart slowly cracking. He didn't realize, but there were tears flowing from his eyes. Why? 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 Why couldn't they understand? He's helped them all fight their own inner demons. He was there for them when they needed him, so why? Why did he feel so alone right now? What did he do to deserve such treatment? Is this karma for constantly peeping on the girls? For being a pervert? Is he destined to be alone? To be misunderstood? Didn't he deserve some help? Did they ever stop to think about maybe he's still haunted by the ghost of his past, just as they were? Is he supposed to be the guy who is a strong for everybody while they ignore his pain? Issei was tired. Tired of being the doormat for everyone to walk on. Even before he came devil, people constantly looked down on him. Whether it was because he was a pervert or some other reason, he has never taken seriously. People never cared much for his feelings or thoughts. He thought he found a home with the URC. Finally, people who cared. People who treated him with respect. But it seems, like always, he's been deluding himself. Like how he put the circumstances of his resurrection at the back of his mind. Or how Rias and Sono ignored the fallen angels killing in their territory, the same way he ignored the hints dropped by Valena Gremory about his future position. It seemed like at the end, he was glorified trophy to be worn out on the arm of the Gremory princess to be paraded other high-class devils, the same devils who sneer at his existence. He wanted to hurt them. He wanted to don his balance breaker and show them who's inferior. He is the Red Dragon Emperor, damn it. He's not some prize stallion to be paraded. Issei felt his anger skyrocket. Once those repressed negative emotions came bubbling to the surface and snarl formed on his face, his body was slowly being coated in red ore as he started losing control. He felt his consciousness slipping, slowly fading into the abyss. It would be easy to give up. Partner! A voice roared in his mind, snapping him out of his funk. Issei's head snapped up, his eyes looking focused from once before. The voice of his partner, seemingly dispelling the darkness. As he regained his bearings, he took a look down and couldn't stop the bitter smile that surfaced on his face at the location of his body unconsciously took up to him. 
the fountain at the Cope Park, the place where it all began. Or where it all, depending on how you look at it. You okay there, partner? The deep, ancient voice of his partner Drake, the Red Dragon Emperor, and one of the two heavenly dragons resounded throughout his mind. He still let out a genuine smile at the concerned voice of his partner. Yeah, Drake, I'm okay. Sorry about worrying you. It's just some unwanted memories surfacing, said Issei with a defeated expression on his face. He hated feeling weak and helpless. I know. From what I could glean from your memories, it's the crow that's bothering you again, stated Drake. Yeah. No matter how hard I try, I just can't get out of their words out of my mind. Was she right about me all along? Am I really such a hopeless loser? That even after defeating a god, I still feel insecure about myself over the words of a weak fallen angel, questioned Issei. It wasn't often that he shared his thoughts and feelings in such a manner, but Drake was his partner. He knew everything there is to know about Issei, even the things he didn't even know about himself. He knew that he could trust his friend to help him. That thought made him smile formfully, replying to his friends to help him out. He didn't know if he could go back to the way they were. Don't beat yourself up about it, partner. I mean, in the beginning, you were pretty pathetic. Oh, Issei, with an indignant look on his face, said, Let me finish, you moron, exclaimed an annoyed Drake. Okay, okay, cease. Don't get your panties in a twist, said Issei. He could almost feel Drake's eyebrow. So dragons have eyebrows, twitching ticks marks appearing on his face. As I was saying, you were pretty pathetic in the beginning. You were weak and clueless to the true scope of what you were getting into. You charged in recklessly, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as dragons are very straightforward creatures. But even though you were weak, I watched you defeat a fallen angel after only a few days of being a devil. I watched you massively outwit and defeat Riser Phoenix, a high-class devil who was far stronger than your king. Then I started to finally pay attention. I watched your fiercely take on Kokovil, a powerful foe who survived the Great War. I watched you battle the Hirakiko, who is said to be the strongest to ever exist. To a standstill, a month later, you achieved Balance Breaker, an almost record timing and defeated a god. You also sent the wielder of the True Longinus, scurrying with his eye missing and his tail between his legs. What I'm trying to say, partner, is that no matter what people have told you in your past or what they will say to you in your future, hold your head up high and be proud of who you are. Take pride in your achievements. Stop caring about what other people think. And be who you are and who you were meant to be. You are the Red Dragon Emperor. Some might call you the weakest, but I've had enough hosts to say with utmost confidence that you, by far, are the strongest. You may not have natural talent like most, but you have something that others will never have. An indomitable will to live and to win. So wipe that frown off your face and do what my partner does best and go leer at some poor woman's tits. Ha, said Trig. What started off as inspirational and moving finished off with a deadpan tone. Issei wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry, so he settled for a mixture of both, but truly the words of his partner really touched him deeply. To hear such high praise from one of the most powerful beings ever to exist is a real boost to one's confidence, especially one as fragile as Issei. But he thought over Drake's words and he came to realize something. He was right now. He was right. For so long, so desperately sought the approval of those around him constantly trying his hardest to please everyone, sometimes at a cost to himself. All the things he has ever done, and all the things that did, all it ever did was bring him pain. Even now, it seemed others accept, expected him to go out of his way to prove something that was already plainly obvious. If giving up your organs and almost dying on several occasions isn't good enough to prove you care deeply for someone, then I don't know what is. He always expected to do these things, jumping through hoops like some circus monkey, but he was tired. Tired of everything, limit up to everyone's expectations, trying to be a hero, trying to be a nice guy. For the first time in his life, he wanted to be selfish. He wanted to do things for himself. He worked so hard at constantly trying to fix the problems of others that he ignored his own issues. Well, that won't be the case any longer. <clears throat> Thank you, Drake.
You're right. I'm always concerned what others think. That I forgot to just be myself and live life to my own principles. I'm done with always going out of my way to make others happy. I am Issei Hyoto, the Red Dragon Emperor, and I'll do whatever the fuck I want, exclaimed as he stood up on the bench and punched his fish in the sky as he declared his intent, ignoring the indicuous stares the people around him were giving him. Ha! Huh, now that's more like it, partner. So what are you going to do now? questioned Drake. Issei was brought back to Earth at the voice of his partner. He sat back on the bench and scratched his head. To be honest with you, Drake, I'm not really sure. I don't want to be around the ORC for a while. Don't get me wrong, it's not like I hate them or anything. I'm more disappointed, if anything. I still consider them friends, but I doubt it will be the same as before. The bond we shared kind of fractured in that room. I won't go out of my way to make them happy anymore. I'll try to be as good as a friend as a comrade. But it ends there. For now, I need to train. We have two months till the raiding games against Cyroorg, and I just need to up my own game if I stand a chance against him. Issei expressed thoughtfully. It was a real conundrum to him. Cyroorg seemed like an unmovable obstacle on his path and his regular training just wasn't going to cut it. He could feel that he was on the brink of something, but there's a brick wall stopping him from getting to the finish line. The Bell Devil is indeed a worthy opponent. He is like you in many regards, no natural talent. He has honed his body into dangerous weapon. However, he has the advantage that his body is naturally superior to yours, as he was born a pure-blooded devil. Why, you are a reincarnated human. He has greater natural strength and stamina than you do, pointed out Drake. As he blunt as he sounded, Issei knew that Drake spoke nothing but the truth. I know, Drake, and there's a problem at that moment, although I've gotten really good at using the boosted gear. My base level is not good enough to keep up with someone like him. I need to find a way somehow, find a way to increase my natural strength and abilities to the point where my body can rival that of a pure-blooded devil, or in my case, a dragon's body. Dragon's body, that's it, exclaimed Issei as he jumped from the bench in excitement. Firstly, ouch. Dragon here, sensitive hearing and all. Secondly, what are you on about? inquired Drake. He had a gritty smile on his face, seemed to be bursting at the seams. That's it, Drake. I figured out how you can boost my base level. In biology class, we've been learning about the heart and how it pumps blood throughout the entire body. So with that in mind, if we applied it to me, our situation, stated Issei as he mentally explained it to his partner. To say that Drake was surprised was an understatement. The plan Issei outlined was crazy bothering and suicidal. You do realize that the chances of you dying is almost guaranteed, right? Drake pointed out shrewdly. He wasn't about his letter partner do something rash and get himself killed. But to his amazement, Issei just smiled sincerely at his words. I know, Drake. I know better than what? I know better than most what you mean. However... I've put my life and my body on the line more times than I can count for the sake of others. Sometimes, even strangers, it's time I did the same for myself. This isn't about proving myself to Rius and the others who are impressing the devils. This is about me, breaking out of the cocoon that's been crafted around me. This is about me getting rid of the metaphorical leash tied around my neck and break free to take the skies to soar like a dragon I was meant to be. I have an opponent in front of me. He is powerful. He is worthy. I think we should let him be the first in line of people to experience the full might of not Issei Hyoto, the Pont of Rius Gremory, but Issei Hyoto, the unstoppable Red Dragon Emperor. Besides, if you think I'm going to die a virgin, you must be out of your fucking mind, exclaimed Issei. Well, he started his monologue with a cool expression on his face, and he ended it with a perverted leer. Drake couldn't help but momentarily deadpan expression on his face, and he broke out into chuckles. There truly isn't a boring moment with you, partner. Very well. I, Drake, the Red Dragon Emperor, will aid you in this quest till the end. If it comes to that, stated Drake proudly. He understood his partner's resolve. He said, smiled at those words. Thanks, Drake, for having my back, and don't worry, as long as the chances are not zero, I will survive. I have far too much left to do to die anyway. You said before, one of my best qualities is my indomitable will. Well... Let me demonstrate to you once more, partner. Let me show you that I won't lose. 
I will overcome, just like that I have every other obstacle that's been set in my path and came out stronger than before, stated Issa as he clenched his fist. With a challenging smile on his face, Drake just chuckled in his mind. His host was truly the most stubborn person he's ever come across, including himself, which says a lot. They described into a comfortable silence after getting enjoyed the peace and quiet of the park. Issei, though, had a light on his mind. His fractured relationship with his friends aren't a priority at this point. His focus is on getting stronger. He already knew what he needed to do, but he needed a scheduled place to do it. He needed to see a certain fallen angel about organizing it. He also needed Ravel's help, as she had access to a certain item that he would use to strengthen himself further. Scene change. It's been a few hours since the episode with Issei has passed. The atmosphere was a somber one at the RC clubroom. Everyone was going along with their normal business, but there seemed to be a distant lack of energy. The entire RC was gathered with the exception of Azazel, Rasvisa, and Ravel. I haven't seen Issei in a while. Where is he? Zenovia thought out loud. He's probably peeping on the kendo club or something. Ah, what a tragedy. The childhood friend of the angel has fallen to such depravity. But don't worry, Issei-kun, I will save you, exclaimed Irina as she put her hands together and prayed to the heavens as her friend just looked at a deadpan look. The rest of the ORC just smiled at the play between the two friends. Their thoughts then turned to their favorite pod. Everyone had their own thoughts on the matter, but Rias just sat at her desk looking desolate. Akino hated seeing her master and her best friend looking so depressed. Cheer up, Rias. I'm sure Isekun will come around soon enough. Just give him some time, spoke Akuno with a smile on her face. Akuno's son is right, Rias Onisama. Isekun will definitely come around, exclaimed Azia extrubently. Rias smiled softly at her. Azia is right, Rias son. Isekun could be dense as a brick, even more than Zenovia, stared Irina, while Zenovia was a sour expression on her face. See, you have a lot of support here, Rias. You just need to be a little more straightforward with him. That's how Rainer got him to go on a date with him chuckled Akino before the smile wiped off her face as well as the faces of most of the club members a growing sense of dread began to pull in their stomachs. Rainer shouted Rias, Akino, Ozzy, and Kiba with Konako looking with the growing sense of realization. Huh? What's going on? whimpered Gasper as he crawled back into his buck. That's why the way he was. He always seemed to look at us in fear sometimes. I understand now, said Akino with a miserable expression on her face. How could she not have realized it sooner? The man she loves more than anything was going through so much and she just ignored it. It's because of him that she finally accepted herself and made peace with her father after years of resentment and self-hate. She should have understood his feelings better than anyone. She never hated herself more in that moment. Easy, son. After all this time, Rainer Sama was still, mumbled Azia. As she covered her mouth, as she let tears run down her face, she couldn't believe she let Issei son suffer. Through that, never seemed to think about asking him about his feelings. She just selfishly wanted him to confess Ria Sony Sama so she could be next. She felt like praying to God at this moment. She didn't believe she deserved salvation, especially considering that it was Issei son who asked for her to be able to pray again. Konoko was silent, but in her mind, she was breathing herself for being so inconsiderate to someone she loves. She was supposed to be his hellcat that stood by him through everything, all of the claims of having his baby and being closer to him, but she missed the emotional pain that must have been plaguing him all this time. That made her feel worse considering she was in Nishoho, who knew Senjutsu, so feeling emotion should be second nature to her, but she failed. Kiba just clenched his fist and directed his anger at himself for being such a bad friend. When Issei's son was suffering in silence, he just overlooked it, even though Issei did his best, even taking multiple punishments in order to help him overcome his own demons. Some best friend I am, he thought to himself. Ah, oh, can someone please explain what's going on? Acquired Irina with Zenovia. Gasper, and looking on curiously, Akino took the time to explain the circumstances behind Issei and Rainer's relationship to the point where she brutally murdered him. To say the others were horrified was an understatement. To think that the perverted pawn who always smiled for everyone had such a traumatic incident happen to him, and only a few months ago, at that. Zenovia and Irina suddenly felt horrible about their behavior toward their friend slash love interest. They needed to apologize to him as quickly as possible. Poor Issei-senpai, and we ganged up on him before, whimpered Gasper sadly with tears in his eyes. That snapped everyone, including Rias, to attention. They suddenly felt disgusted at their earlier behavior, but also extreme worry for their lovable pawn who has been missing since. They started to have very bad premonitions occur to them concerning their behavior towards their friend-slash-love interest. Rias was the first to snap into action. 
Issei, she exclaimed with worry. What had she done? How could she be so selfish and uncaring towards the man she loves? The man who gave everything for her and her Paraj's happiness. She started to feel like scum for doubting him and acting like she's some spoiled brat. She needed to find Issei. She needed to apologize and beg for his forgiveness. These were the thoughts running through her mind. Similar, those thoughts ran through the minds of everyone else's. As she prepared the transport magic circle with tears running down her face, flash. After the red flash of the ORC found themselves in the basement of the Hyoto residence. They immediately ran to the living room as fast as they could. Issei, cried Rias, as she ran only to come to screeching halt as she spotted a nonchalant Azazel sipping on some tea and a nervous looking rival sitting next to him. She immediately questioned him. Azazel, what are you doing here? Never mind that, have you seen Issei? cried Rias hysterically. The members of the ORC behind her nodding in agreement with grim faces, Azazel put down his tea and looked at them with blank look on his face that unnerved them as spoke the words that shattered them. Issei? is gone, he said with a monotone voice. What? exclaimed the ORC, with Rias and Akino looking stricken at the news while Azia just cried to herself. It felt as if the whole world was crumbling around them. The only thought on their minds was to find Issei as soon as possible. And that's the end of the prologue. Chapter 1 The Red Reaper The tension in the room was thick enough to cut with a knife. The members of the URC were stunned to silence. They were horrified by the thought that Issei may have strayed. More so, if he strayed because the way they treated him. The worst case scenarios were going through their minds at a rapid pace. Some were tame, were horrifically fatal. Poor Azia couldn't handle the news and promptly fainted. Luckily, Zenovia reflexes were quick enough to stop her friend from hitting the ground. She proceeded to deposit Azia on the couch while the URC were finally regaining their mental bearings. If they paid enough attention to their surroundings, they would have noticed the mischievous glint in Azazel's eyes of a facepalm of Ravel, who couldn't help but wonder if the fallen angel governor was a bit touched in the head. After finally snapping out of their shock, the RC snapped into action. What do you mean Issei's gone? thundered Rias. She was on the brink of having a mental breakdown. Her beloved Issei was missing. Was he taken? Was it the Chaos Brigade? Did he leave of his own violation? Was it because she pushed him too hard? Did she go too far in her attempts to progress their relationship? There were some of her thoughts that currently played in her mind. She felt disgusted with herself, of her treatment of the man she loved more than anything. How could she be so thoughtless in the way she treated him? She only prayed to Mao Sama that this wasn't too late to make it right. Similar thoughts ran through the minds of the rest of the ORC as guilt from earlier was compounded by this new situation. Ravel watched the scene with a stoic suppression on her face. She was highly upset with the way they treated Issei-sama earlier. However, she was mature enough to keep her thoughts to herself. For now, she was extremely well-mannered and a polite girl. Her pure-blooded upbringing saw to that. However, she could also be quite vindictive. Then situations called for her to be hurting the man she held in the highest regard and certainly qualified as such a situation. She took a deep breath, though, and exhaled. Issei-sama wouldn't want to her to take some petty form of revenge on her friends. Even though they deserved it, she would be the bigger woman. Maybe her Issei-sama will finally notice her feminine charms and maybe, just maybe, Ravel's fantasy sequence ends. She stood on a wide open field of the greenest grass seen. Flowers of various kinds were blooming all around her. She wore a simple white sundress while her golden blonde hair flowing in the wind. She could feel... Basically, she's just doing, she's fantasizing about Issei and her relationship. And Ravel's fantasy sink was, <laughs> giggled Ravel, creepily to herself, with a goofy expression on her face, with that line of drool coming down a corner of her mouth. Cheeks tinted red from heavily blushing with little blood leaking from her nose. Her perverted smile wasn't helping much in regards to holding up her dignified Oji-sama image either. Luckily, she snapped out of it and quickly enough one-sided, shouting match happening between Rias and Azazel, who just seemed highly amused at the situation, with Akino occasionally chipping in, and Azia who also seemed to back among the land of concussions, although she looked inscolable. Ravel counted her lucky stars that nobody caught her having one of her perverted delusions about Issei-sama. She doesn't want him to think of her as a shameful woman after all. Anyway, it seems that Rias was still livid about Issei-sama's disappearance, but more importantly it seems Azazel-sama still hasn't given them the full story and just appears to be enjoying the situation misleading words have created. 
Honestly, what an insufferable man. I wonder how Shizama-sama and Barkyo-sama put up with this man and his nonsense for so long, thought Ravel, before she made an effort to clear the situation by coughing loudly into her hand and to get attention from the occupants of the room. She succeeded as all the eyes were on her now, looking as dignified and elegant as ever. A striking contrast from earlier perverted expression, she took the floor. I think there has been a misunderstanding. Despite what Azazel Sama's words seem to imply, Issei Sama did not run away or go astray. He simply filed for a leave of abstinence from school, as well as informing his clients that he will be unavailable for the next two months due to taking a training trip to prepare for an upcoming raiding game, spoke Ravel eloquently. It seemed her words desired. In effect, as the tension immediately left the room and an overwhelming sense of relief filled the hearts of everyone present. Well, Almost everyone. A certain fallen angel governor was crouching in a corner and pouting collectively like a child. Despite being a well-bred Oji-sama, Ravel couldn't stop herself from rolling her eyes at her own grown man-child. Said child decided it was finally time to speak up. Yeah, Issei came to me earlier today. He asked me to help him out by filling a leave of abstinence at school. He still get the work done. He said he'd have his familiar... His... He said he'd have his familiar his them up at the end of each day. He also wanted me to find him a scheduled space to train in without disturbance, so I hooked him up with one, though the help of my connections because I'm cool like that, finishes Zazel with a cool smirk on his face while striking a pose. Rius, while relieved that her beloved pawn didn't stray, we couldn't stop herself from almost snarling at Azazel. How dare he! Issei has her pawn. She could have been notified immediately. At the very least, he should have requested permission. Didn't he trust her enough to speak a bit about this? She immediately stopped her train of thought as she recalled the state of affairs between her and Issei. Did he feel that he needed to get away from her? She felt her heart break at the thought. She loves Issei more than anything. But with the way things were, and the things that were said, their potential relationship seems to be even further away from her. She cursed herself for being rash and polluted in her reactions to him, trying to pressure him into confessing. For one of the first times in her life, she felt the sleep deep pang of regret. While these issues were important in her mind, she needed to get back of the crux of the matter and find out why Azazel thought it was a good idea to allow her pawn to leave without consulting her. And why, Azazel, did you think it was a good idea to allow Issei to leave without my permission? Question Rius in a frigid tone, accompanied by an equally cold gaze. She was backed up by Akino, who glared at the fallen angel governor. The others, while relieved that their friend was okay, were also highly curious about what was going on. They were hoping to find Issei and apologize to him for the way they treated him, but it seems they will have to wait a little longer. That only hoped it wasn't too late. The relationship with him wasn't fractured beyond repair. In response to Reese's question, the perpetually joyful Archangel narrowed his eyes and adopted an expressionless mass on his face that greatly unnerved the members of the URC. They've never been on the receiving end of the governor's eerie before. Due to the usual dynamic between him and Issei, it's easy to forget the man in front of them was the most dangerous being in existence. Ravel corked an elegant eyebrow at the Jurassic Trangent character for the governor secretly impressed with his approach. Rius would never admit it out loud, but she was terrified right now. She tried hard not to let the quiver in her knees show. You make it sound as if Issei is a prisoner here, Rius. That he has no free will of his own. In that case, questioned Azazel with a steady tone in his voice. He was giving off an extremely oppressive aura to those around him and made them start sweating. Rias faltered in her indignant anger at the situation and winded her eyes at the question. How could he say such a thing? Is that why Issei left without telling her? Because he felt that she shouldn't let him go otherwise? Of course not, Azazel, Rhea spluttered. I was just concerned about him as his king. I just don't want anything to happen to him, she added. It was the truth to some extent. She knew how close Issei and Azazel were and wasn't too keen on telling him about the altercation that happened earlier today. She knew for sure that it would not end well for her, at least. Azazel just stared at her with a scrutinizing expression on his face that made her feel like an ant under magnifying glass. She felt as though her entire soul was being laid bare before this man. She didn't like the feeling after all. After a few seconds that actually felt like a lifetime to her, he finally broke out into his usual goofy laugh and Rias as well, the RC released the breath they didn't realize they were. What they didn't realize was that Issei already briefed Azazel on everything that happened earlier.
flashback. Azizel just sat in silence as he dis digested everything Issei just told him about what happened. He was severely disappointed in the behavior of the ORC, especially Akano. He's been around for long enough, though, to know that sometimes things like this happen. They were still young and prone to make mistakes. He would never admit this out loud, but he has a soft spot for the lovable pervert. He's never had any children of his own, so he couldn't help but look to this generation's heavenly dragons, whom he had direct role in guiding and training them as a Sturgeon family. He was surprised, though, at how calmly Issa was taking it, especially considering what an emotionally driven person he is. There's also the fact that he's a dragon. He should be counting his lucky stars that he doesn't have emotionally distraught Sekiru rampaging around Ko. Finally coming back to current conversation, he looked at the solemn Issei and couldn't help but ask, Are you doing okay, Issei? Azazel questioned softly. Issei looked at the fallen angel governor with determined look on his face. Regardless of his own problems and insecurities, Issei trusted Azazel and deeply respected the man for not only his intellect, but also the key role he played in bringing about peace between the factions. Which is why he wasn't afraid to open up to the man, as opposed to the ORC, as he knew he would only get the truth from him. Honestly, I can't say that I'm doing fine. I'm certainly not 100%. It hurts, you know, the words that were said, and in some cases, weren't said. I don't hate them for what happened, but in my heart, I can't help but resent them a little. Not to the point of hurting them, but just to the point that my guard will always be up around them. I know I promised you I'd take care of Akino's son, but it doesn't look I'd be able to keep that promise. I'll try my best to protect her on the battlefield and off it as a favor to you, but that's as far as it goes. I have my own path to walk, and I plan to take the first step myself. For too long, I have detailed about in mediocrity instead of rising up to the top as I know I can. That's why I need to get away for a while. I'm on the brink of something. I can feel it. Call it the next stage to my evolution, if you will. I'm going to be leaving either way, but I'd prefer if I had your support. These were the resolute words spoken by Issei. Looking into the young man's eyes and seeing his determination, Azazel knew that he wasn't going to be winning this argument. Not that he wanted to, either. He agreed with Issei, and the young man with such potential should go an extra mile to cross over that final hurdle standing in his way. The difference between being good and being great. He just nodded his head and found a fixed location far away from civilization for Issei to promise for not revealing his whereabouts to anyone. Flashback end. Back to the conversation at hand, Azazel just finished his chuckles before giving his reasons to the ORC. You don't have to worry about Issei. He's strong enough to take care of himself. I sure you realize he surpassed you and everyone in your barrage a long time ago. He also spent a month on his scheduled mountain being harassed by a Dragon King, so he's used to this kind of situation. He's on the verge of evolving in terms of his power. His aura feels more focused and driven. He's going to the next level, and I'm not too sure if Sire Org Beale will be ready for his unstoppable force of nature that's going run straight into him in that writing game, said Azazel with a smirk on his face. The others were bewildered by the words of the fallen angel to pay such high praise to someone that is no laughing matter. I suggest you use this time properly. Hone your skills so that you can at least keep up with not just Cyrog and his barrage, but Issei as well, stated Azazel as he made leave the Hyoto residence, leaving behind a deeply troubled ORC. At the corner of the room, Ravel, who was all forgotten about the ORC, she also met with Issei-sama before he left. Not that she was going to tell them that, just petty form of revenge on her part. She couldn't help but think back to that meeting. And that is where we're going to stop for now. I apologize for the cliffhanger this time, but this time it's actually not my fault. Last video I did it on purpose, but thank you so much for the support. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this story. This story is going to be around four hours to read, so I can make it into a movie pretty quickly. What if Goku was in high school DxD was the second most voted, so it's actually going to be coming out in movie format, and it's going to be around two hours. But before that, obviously, is what if Issei had Ultra Instinct the movie, which will be coming out either before this video, or after part one of this video, or after part two of this series. So thank you so much for this like, I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. Bounce Breaker and Limit Breakers, you guys are truly my homies. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing and supporting. About 40% of you are not subscribed to the channel. So if you would hit that subscribe button and help me get to 50,000 subscribers or 40,000 subscribers, that would be absolutely amazing because that is our next goals. Once again, thank you to all my Balance Breakers. And before anything at all, on Fallen DxD, I will be reviewing anime and making fun of it. And on 
and Popowski, I will be doing Dragon Ball related stuff and shorts on there. So thank you so much for your support, guys. Once again, let's try to hit a thousand likes. And if you want to become a member, it'll be the first link down in the description below. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out.